What's going on, everybody? Anthony here, Six Scale Mafia. Today, uh, pleasure to announce that I'm having Terry Metalis, the showrunner of Star Trek Picard Season 3 and 12 Monkeys. It's a pleasure to finally have you here aboard, Terry. How are you doing today, my yeah, friend? It's been a long while. We've been trying to do this for many, many months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little, a little bit, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's funny. I had a couple people on my, my channel, too, wondering. They're like, hey, are you guys uh ever gonna hook up i'm like yeah we we, we hooked up in vegas a little <laughs> but they're like no no the show and i'm like uh when we can when there's yeah. time so you know definitely cool man definitely i mean we're, we're towards shows almost new year's i know i know when is when is that shaw figure coming out oh right to the shaw. right to the meat and potato because <laughs> uh, right that was the coolest looking uh, that sculpt on that was so good that it looked like a photo of Todd. There's so many, I would show the people and like, that's not Todd. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not, I, no. Yeah. The, right, right here. Right. This is what we're talking oh, about. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this one was shown off, I think in, in Shanghai a couple of months ago, I think soon. Um, I know that, you know, as I guess we get right into it with, with XO six, that Shaw will be the next pre-order for season three Picard. Wow. So soon I'd say soon. Um, and but, yeah, but yeah and then yeah, we have warf there oh my god that's so great with the sword yeah so here's the other the other close-up of him it's great it's amazing yeah i mean i remember and i i think you you probably caught it right when i had when i had taught on the show about six months ago yeah uh we were able to show him the the render of the prototype you know for his figure and i know he was just ecstatic so i have a i have a friend who works part of a franchise and he d I asked, I said, do you have any props from your movies and your shows? He's like, no, I love to have the toys. The, uh, I love to have the toys of the things I created. So he's got every like toy related to his thing. And I'm like, oh, really? And then once I started getting these and then this comes uh, in the mail, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I get it. It is, it is, it is a, a singular feeling to, uh, you go back in your head to the moment you were talking about it for the first time and creating it. And then suddenly there's a toy that can go on everybody's shelf. It's, it's, it really is the coolest feeling. It's like that the actualization of like getting some physically yeah. in your hand, yeah. Yeah, it's very it, you know, cool. it was once an idea then goes into production, but now yeah, you have this timeless physical piece, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that, that is, that is, that is Picard, Admiral Picard season three. And you haven't, and you, this is, you haven't opened it yet. Nope. Yes. I've got it in the mail. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm to open it up it's very cool well i can't wait whenever you want to open it we can either yeah, do it. you want me to start okay here if you right, want to open it right now we can start no, definitely right now <laughs> it slides i've never i've always wanted to do one of these unboxing things too well we're doing a live un this. well previewed right. unboxing <laughs> first yeah. time look at that there you go By i'll the even, way, I'll even how, bring you up how, how cool is it that toys now Oh wow, my name is on the back of this thing. Um, have credits for like yeah. the hard work of the of the people who go in. Look at all that. That's incredible. there you are, my friend. Sculpted are amazing. Unbelievable. Okay. Right, okay. Let's let's get this bad boy open. Uh probably I don't want to be as embarrassing as I would be normally without you watching if I just tear it open. No, no, no. And start yanking stuff out. <laughs> uh, although I'm notoriously bad with taking off the the, the, the little baggy thing. Me, me guys. too. Me too. Like, get it off. The, the, the hands. Get it off the hands of tape things. Yeah. Yeah. The feet should slide right on off. The hands you'd want to pull a little bit. Yeah, but the worst is when the hand comes off and you just can't get it I, with hot toys. I have a wow, look at that. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. So, first, yeah, there you go. First impressions unboxing Admiral Picard. Well, the jacket is like this is one of like the coolest parts of the, 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 of the realization from, from concept to toy. You know, I just remember when we talked about this jacket, which was, you know, Patrick wanted to make sure he didn't want to be back in a next gen uniform, but we also wanted him to be <laughs> in some kind of a uniform. Right. <laughs> some of the so, nostalgia there. So this, this idea of a sort of an admiral's field jacket, which was, you know, 
Starfleet, clearly Starfleet issue with the lines and whatnot, um, but also was different. Um, I mean, I think we talk even about like sub commanders and like Gene Hackman uh, in Crimson Tide having that oh, leather that sort of jacket at the top, right? And so we talked about different, what would be the Starfleet version of that? And this was kind of, that was kind of the idea. Now, let me see what you got here. We get a phaser. Ooh, and a bottle of Chateau Picard. Now, is that the thing, the special thing that they did not announce? No, no, there is, there is one more special thing in the box. In the box. Okay. There was a phaser. I would look, right, I'll say underneath the clamshell. Ooh, Okay. So take. once you once you pull out okay, all so the accessories, me, you got a little chateau card, mm. which nobody wants because it's not very good, clearly. Um, <laughs> and then underneath the shell is um, so you should have another layer that can kind of open within the shell. Oh, you mean the the whole the packaging itself? Yeah, the actual packaging it, it itself. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is cool. Wow, that's really nice. It looks just like the real thing. Look at that. Yeah. Let me open that. That's how we do it. <laughs> yep, same. And you're from Jersey. Wow, this looks just like it, man. That is so cool. Wow. Yeah, that is the gift. Spoiler alert. Uh, but hey, you know, oh, if anybody's going to spoil it for, for the fans, it, it might as well be you. That is a, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> right? That is a really nice gift. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah, and I mean, that's the same, you know, insignia right on the jacket. So it's kind of cool for, for you know, the fans to have, you know, that replica right there. And they can wear it, too. All right. So now I got to do, I got to, he's got to be holding the phaser. So I'm going to pull the phaser hand. This yeah, you got to have the phaser set. Now, I mean, the hands might be a little... Uh, stiff at first, right? Because he's just right, brand new out of the box. Um, I'm. Th this is. There's a. There was a Marty McFly that I got that I just struggled, struggled with getting one of these hands on. But I don't have that problem necessarily with XSX. I say, hopefully. Well, I like to kind of keep a bit at like a ninety degree angle, and then kind of hold one one of your hands on the back of the elbow. Okay. You know what I mean? That way you have kind of like a oh, force I got there, resistance. Okay. All right. So you, you mean you put the thing at a 90. Look at this. These are some real toy tips from a professional. Like that? Like. Yeah. Like, so like with mine, like I would hold it, you know, um, put, put your hand, like bend the, bend your arm right. this way and then kind of hold in the back to brace. And then you can kind of, and I kind of twist in a little bit as I. Get into the wrist peg. Toys, man. They're so, I mean, we've gone from, I mean, I'm from the Star Wars generation mm -hmm. of Same. the night, the toys from the 70s um, to, uh, to this, which is like the most advanced toy ever. Okay, so here we go. Picard season three. I mean, Look at that cool with the phaser. I mean, come on. How cool is that? Oh, and there's Locutus. Right. Now, I'll tell you something kind of cool. Yeah. This was almost season three. This was kind of the, the idea. The original idea I wanted to do was uh, that the Borg, this is before I had figured out his son, was that the Borg had taken his body so that they could bring back Locutus. Mm -hmm. so the final face-off would actually be Picard versus Locutus in a very real way. Um, oh. A way of vanquishing sort of the demon, but by actually facing off against himself. Um, like from another dimension or reality? Or? No, because his body, remember he had his, his real body was was shot. And in oh, state, you think that body would kind Borg, of... got, Borg got that reanimated it and turned it into Locutus, and then so it was it was Picard versus Locutus in a very real way, which would have paid off, I think, the body thing too. Yeah. Um, we 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 did a little bit of we did the same idea of like they still had the body and they needed the body to do the thing. 
Um, but that was the very, very first idea. But so it was pretty cool. Yeah, that would have been really cool. But but overall, it was great anyway, as it is with Jack. I mean, but but wow, I didn't. I never even thought about it that you're right. That would have kind of tied in the whole body thing together. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great. Look at these. Look at that. The first contact one, right? That I got in this hand. It's the first con. There's a different uh, next gen Locutus, right? Well, there's only the one Locutus, but that's like a um, the head, though. Right? Yeah, the head. The it's head full, is right. Full on the on best of both worlds, right? Like yeah, across the forehead, yeah. But damn, yeah. Then, so you mentioned okay, so you have you, you've got I mean, them in your wait, wait, oh, wait, no, I'm mixing oh, the premium the premium cardboard. Okay, <laughs> I remember when Hot Toys gave us that one. I, that was for Doc Brown, right? Um, but you, you would think, okay, so now like looking at the figure, first hands impressions coming from directly from you, accuracy, you're talking about the jackets, oh my the God. tailoring the, the detailing on the jacket is phenomenal and the badge. And then, and, and even the sculpt is so great on his face. And, but I mean, just like there's the attention to detail that XO six manages to pull off is extraordinary. It's just it's it's really fantastic the the phaser's 100 percent how it should be where's my little shut up a card right there right even the bottle yeah bottle's fantastic there we go that's like drunken night picard <laughs> drunken night picard huh? what'd you say <laughs> <laughs> there we go that's phaser Chateau Picard. <laughs> so, so what is these? What'd you call them? Night? That, that's like angry drunk Picard, I think, right? With the what would you what you say to me? Huh? Huh? Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. It's so cool. How badass does he look? Yeah, I, I think it looks great. I mean, right out right out of season three. Do you know? I mean, has Patrick been able to see it at all? Or I don't know. Else? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how licensing works anymore. Well, they it used to be in the old days they would at least get one of everything uh, mm -hmm. that was sent uh, that they made. Like when I was working on Voyager and DS Nine, sometimes we would have to do toy runs where they would get a big delivery of all the toys, like all the Playmates so, figures yeah, from they had to bring it to their trailers. Yeah. I remember Jerry's first year when she first started getting those, too. That was fun. Uh, but speaking of, oh man, Jerry, how you, cool! Right now, you know, you know, you we, you saw the uh, Jerry Ryan seven of nine for Voyager already. Oh, good. Yes, I have it. Yeah, and I and I gave her one too. Oh, uh, you did. Oh, seven, excellent. She loves it. Well, I'll bet she'll probably uh, oh, love God. this too. Is, this, is she gonna have four pips? Um. See, this is what I don't know. She should. I have. don't know. So mm -hmm. I I will say stay yeah. tuned on that right, but here here is the you know the prototype obviously it's uh, pending approval, but we will have her from the card. That's fantastic. Yeah, and it was funny. I remember when I, when 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 Todd you know Stashwick was on, and he was like, "Are you guys making seven? And I'm like, "Well, I can't really confirm." Nor <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, you guys are making her." Yeah, I'm like, well, yeah. are you guys making seven? You cannot confirm or deny like you're not going to make seven. Come on. <laughs> not, <laughs> and neither confirm nor deny at this moment. That's fair. You're making seven. So you bad. know, s six months later, you know, we can, you know, show this off to you and yeah. everybody here at home. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm super excited myself too. Super excited. I mean, that, that was a really interesting twist sort of like going into season three with her. Like I didn't expect that relationship to kind of, uh, happened with Shaw. First one when I saw Shaw, I was like, "Oh man, this guy's kind of an ass." But then you know, really started to like episode two, three. I started to really kind of you know get into him. But her, her her whole dynamic with him was was awesome. Yeah, well, they have great chemistry in real life too. So, which was super fortunate for us because sometimes that doesn't go that way. Mm. They loved each other like the moment they met each other. So that was that just did nothing but help that um and they're both just phenomenal actors so it's uh yeah it came out great yeah no i i loved it i loved how you're able to pull that all together because i wasn't expecting it 
for me, like watching season three, I didn't expect anything like that. Like I didn't know that there was going to be a Titan and that she was going to be there or all of that. I mean, was that just kind of, was that very early on when you started thinking about like how season three is going to work together, how we're going to have these key players in here? Yeah, we knew. Um, so again, we, 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 seasons two and three were, we made them back to back and kind of on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So when, when we branched off to do season three, we, there are things that we talked about um, how it would end that Akiva would set up sort of her um, taking over in the last few scenes in season two and sitting in the captain's chair. And so we would, we were setting that up Some of the Rafi and seven dynamic changed in season two. Initially their, their whole, their whole dynamic at the end was going to be what much more, what if where they didn't really know where they, they, they stood with each other. Um, and so then, uh, and then what else? There was something to do with Laris as well. Um, so we were doing it all on, on top of each other, but we knew that we needed to set Jerry up, that she would be on uh, the Titan, um, and that Rafi was going to go into deep cover. Um, and then how much we had actual time to set up in the season two finale would be up to Akiva, which we, there, well, that was jam-packed, so there wasn't a lot. Right to do um there was also uh a scene that really clarified i think there was some confusion for a lot of people that uh the gerardi borg were the real borg and that we had erased wolf 359 and changed the board uh in time and we made it there was a scene that was super cool but again you run out of time and money and so we didn't know that that had not been shot and we should have, <laughs> but we were so scrambling and busy. And then we were like, Oh, that wasn't, we didn't actually do that. So, um, you know, it's it, making TV at that, at that many episodes of television, 20, uh, at that budget, uh, mm-hmm. on those time constraints is challenging. It's- yeah. And like you said, that was a back to back thing, right? It was two and three. Basically you didn't really have much break in between at yeah. all to, we were, we were we were limping to, to season three because it was because we were filming during covid season mm-hmm. two had, had a had a few different versions of it that we had gone through even before the one that that we had aired and so yeah it was uh, uh looking back it was uh it was it was so funny i was talking to patrick we did this thing at sag the other day and he's, he's like i cannot believe we did those back to back and i'm like neither can i and it's Everybody was really tired by season three. Oh yeah, I bet. Well, that was kind of like Lord of the Rings too, right? I mean, they filmed those yeah back to back, right? Or, you know, and, but it we, we were certainly reinvigorated by the next gen cast and all these new people, and it, it was a different kind of feeling show. So we were able to get some energy that way because they were doing something a little bit different. Um, sure, right. From two to three, you got a whole new. Yeah. Not new, but you know what I mean. Yeah, past and we had a lot. We yeah. had a lot of freaks, and freaks will bring energy to to a set. Like, oh yeah, even yeah. if it's just their acting, he's gonna he's gonna make sure everybody's on their toes, which in 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 the bestest way possible. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. I remember seeing him. Um, God, I think it was like twenty years ago. He was telling me a story. I was at a uh, we were in Pasadena. I think it was two thousand two or something. And I think he he was mentioning in the um. What is it? The the high uh hide and Q? Is that the Q episode? The the Robin Hood? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. He said right. like they were all dressed up and then he actually got slashed and they had to take him to the hospital. Oh um, god. While yeah. he was wearing the the Robin Hood. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they took him there that way. And uh I, I think he said it was like that was it. That was the shot, and they kept it in the episode. Oh like, god. We, we actually got I hit. Love this story. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was like 20 years ago. Ask him about it. I uh, I was like, wow, really? So I always laughed at that. For season three, like, so you mentioned earlier, like the uniform designs and Patrick not wanting to be um, in, in the standard uniform. Did you have a lot of um, kind of like input in, in your own thoughts, like into the designs well, or? Yeah, a lot. Well, we, uh, we, for season two was when we started to redesign it and we went sort of back my favorite uniform was the monster maroon wrath of khan thing so i wrath wanted a double-breasted thing 
you know, uh, I wanted the ability to have that thing down and put back up and like Kirk does. And there's one shot of Shaw doing it, but his didn't really come down all the way. So he's faking it a little bit. <laughs> um, so a lot of input with, with the uniforms. Also kind of going back to a more traditional next gen look, um, but feel like it was the next generation of where we would have gone. Um, and then the the jackets, the leather jackets that became such a big thing. Those were, so a, after we did Picard's jacket, um, we were we knew Rafi needed to come back on to the Titan at some point. Mm -hmm. And she had been out in the field doing intelligence work. And I was like, let's give her a badass like leather jacket, like field jacket version of like, and if they're cool, maybe everybody can get them by the end. And this second, um, Michael or, or, or our costume designer had it made. We were like, Oh yeah. And everybody saw it on her and everybody was like, I want one of those. Oh, I, I bet all the, all the actors probably because yeah. it's probably much more comfortable too than like, you no, know, they just look so cool. And then, uh, I think it was episode six where we really started to bring him in. Riker got them. I think Worf gets one. Uh, and then everybody was like, I, I want that jacket. Mm -hmm. Patrick was like, I don't want the jacket. <laughs> I, <laughs> but, I want the jacket. I everybody, want the <laughs> everybody else, everybody else. And so much so that even when, when, when uh, we wrapped, they would take them home and CBS would send people to their houses and give us the jacket back. <laughs> well, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, 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 yes. There's a few stories of, of, of those, um, but they're, uh, they're gorgeous. They are. They are. I like I said. I, I when I saw them, I was like, "Oh yeah, I need that jacket." Like it's just yeah, something badass you, about it. Like you said, you go to any one of these conventions now. There's everybody's wearing them. It's yeah. Really oh yeah. When we when was well, this Vegas or you know this this year in Vegas, Vegas it was or everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. And there was a couple of vendors trying to sell you know some too there that I saw and yeah. I was like, man, I yeah, those are awesome. That's a cool. That is really really cool. And it's cool how like you mentioned it, like in the show. It, it kind of little by little more and more of the crew started to kind of adopt that, you know, over, you know, over the course of the episodes. And by the end, you're like, wow, everybody's just looking. Yeah. On the bridge. Really slick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I mean, and we're lucky today. Everybody aged so well, you know what I mean? Like everybody just looks phenomenal. Um, everybody. And he couldn't ask for a better, better good looking team of uh of star trek veterans in there like it, it was pretty we were very lucky i was super stoked seeing that too like seeing everybody back because i didn't think that was going to happen and I, I know you mentioned you guys were doing a kind of a back-to-back -back filming but to me it just i thought it was done i thought nemesis was it you know the film and then yeah that was a wrap you know and then of course when the announcement of picard you know initially you know came out i was oh i was really excited you know just to see you know picard again and you know but i thought yeah I, did, I never thought that i would see like the whole crew again especially on the enterprise d like yeah well that was the the enterprise came from you couldn't do i mean you could but uh it wouldn't feel right to do a reunion without an enter the enterprise is as much of a character in the show of course yeah as, as and it felt like since we were saving the all of them to be together for the last two you wanted the enterprise and it just it, like the enterprise f wouldn't have had any kind of sentimentality to it at all which maybe some no. people would have preferred but most not and the e as cool as the e was it wouldn't feel it just doesn't feel like ah oh, you know and then when when i said well if it's the d and they got the thing and da 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 Every, every time I would bring it up, somebody in the room would, would get choked up. And so we knew that that was, that was, uh, something we should, that was it, right. That was the, that, you, you, saw the and, and, you know, I remember telling early, early days telling, um, LeVar, I was like, you're, you're at the museum and you've been restoring the enterprise D and we save it for the last two, you, the hangar opens and you and, and he just started to cry he's like i've been restoring the d and i'm like yeah and then i started to get choked up mm -hmm. and then 
we just have to do this. Right. Uh, like who, who better to do it? And, it, and it was just, it, and, I, and it was, you know, look, it's, there's many interviews that have covered this, but it was an almost impossible task to do in time. Um, but we, we were very lucky that, uh, we had such an incredible art department and to, to be able to pull that off in time and construction. And we, it was a lot of work that went into it. I think, like I said, I was, I was so like, I saw the last two, um, at the IMAX. Oh, you went to, that's so cool. Yeah. Cause they had, one, they had it here in Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. So I brought my, my, my best friend, uh, who I grew up with watching Star Trek next generation. We used to make Star Trek next generation, like action figure movies like stop motion. Yeah. Uh, so I brought him with me and he was sitting next to me, uh, Brian roll. Let's shout out to you, buddy. He's sitting next to me. And then sitting next to me was Spiner, Frakes, you know, LeVar and like the whole next gen cast. And right. Patrick's in front of him. And he went <laughs> over halfway. He's like, I cannot even believe or watch Cause if I wanted it to feel like a last next gen movie, those last mm-hmm. two hours. And, to be able to be in an IMAX theater with with those guys, girls, and it was it was incredible. It was uh, it was wild. I, I I can't really imagine it, right? Because you, you're saying you've been a Star Trek fan for probably as long as I have. Yeah, um, well, you know, yeah. being at a young age, having the figures making stop motion videos now all yeah. of a sudden you're, you're making it with them and you're sitting there like mean, it's still it's still real to you i mean does it sometimes feel like wow i'm like doing this um i still can't believe we got away with it yeah you know what i mean like um it was just that it was pretty ambitious but again we had the support of everybody i mean from minute one alex was like that's the right thing. Let's try and do it. And then, um, and then Akiva and, and Patrick and just like, we knew it was the right, the right call. Um, but it was a, it was a big, big change, um, to be able to build that many sets in time. It was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, was like- you know, sick bay, it was, uh, um, transporter room there's a lot co- more corridors you know it's like you're building a ship we just didn't build engineering is basically the only thing we didn't really do um but we didn't really need it either it wasn't a, like a story point um, right so but uh yeah it was pretty great yeah all those sets and then plus i mean the, the restoration of the bridge even was that was insane to me when i saw i mean you guys brought back a lot of the uh some of the old Crew, yeah. right? Production crew. Um, yeah, I know Michael and Denise Okuda so were there. And Drexler and yeah, everybody. Um, Herman Zimmerman came by. Uh, yeah, Dave and Liz uh, were so dedicated to that set. And again, we only had two days. To, it was it was you know. Wait, six, you only had two days to build the entire bridge. No, no, two days to shoot on it. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, whoa. Five months to to figure out how to put it together because. I mean, you also need stage space to do it. So you had to take down the chateau and shoot early, the early stuff with, in, with Laris in the first episode and then oh, yeah. down. So you have room for it and then, and then build it and figure out how you're going to be able to afford. Um, but we just did it how they did it back then. It was pretty great. Way to do it. No, I, w- I loved it. I love seeing that. Like when all the lights started turning on and all, and that's well, the thing. That and, was the and, and that was the thing, like I said to, to, you know, so my when I first my first job was as a PA uh, uh, in Hollywood on Star Trek Voyager. It was the coolest job ever, and the you kind of in those days hid that you were a Star Trek fan to get hired by Star Trek because they didn't want crazy fans walking around just distracted. Yeah, so I had to keep that all on the inside until I would go to the art department and hang out with Mike and Denise and Doug Drexler and John Eves. And then they were just fans and had been working on it. And so I could just let my fandom go. So that mm. I'm very close with them and, and to this day still, still am. And so to have them back um, doing this is extraordinary. But to your point about turning the lights on, 
I said to Mike, I was like, look, this is something you would never would have seen back in the day, but if, could you imagine if you had this ability for screens and graphics, what right. would it do? And he like, he got really excited by that and designed the like, <laughs> how the lines come on and everything yeah. like that. So it's, and, and, but, and when it comes from him, it could not be more authentic. You of know, course. Uh, to, I'm like, that's what it would do. That's not fan fiction. That's the guy who created Elkar. Right, so he created Elkar. He's like, this is he how the boot up sequence is. He gets to say that's how that animation works. Yeah. Yeah, seeing it, like I said, seeing it. I mean, even at home, it was great. But, like, seeing it all in the theater, that was what was like, I whoa, wish this is, like, really awesome. Like, yeah. And I was surprised. I mean, was that a decision? Did you? Is that something you tried to pitch? Or did, was that, like, a studio decision? Or, like, yeah. hey, we're going to put this in select theaters? Paramount Publicity felt like really felt strong about those last two and wanted to make it an, an event. It was the moment in which the next gen cast was coming fully back together. Um, and so uh, again, why, why wouldn't you, I mean, the, you know, they couldn't, what they couldn't do is just put it in theaters and charge eight bucks because that's a whole, you have to renegotiate with actors and everybody for something like that. But mm a limited um free screening you can you could do and that's what and it was but you know forever grateful to paramount publicity for putting that together because that was not easy to do with imax theaters no and it seemed like a kind of well seemingly anyway from a public standpoint it seemed like it was a really quick kind of decision it, it oh, oh, for me i was like whoa i got I saw well, a lot of work way. a lot of work goes in, into that because it's licensing as agreement with movie theaters and stuff. So they, they worked really hard to, to make that happen for fans. And then, and then had those amazing prints of the cast prints that they gave out. Yeah. You know yep. I mean? They just did, a, you couldn't ask for, for a better job. They had like the popcorn boxes. I like, I said, send me all the leftover popcorn boxes. <laughs> Cause they were beautiful. They were like these hand cut boxes of the key art. They, they were gorgeous. Yeah, and that's the, that's where I got the poster uh, that I showed you before. Yeah, from the yeah, yeah. the one here, you know. Oh, uh, but no, and that's what I mean, like that, because you guys already know before we know, right? So that's why I was like, right. I heard news like, oh, in two two weeks or in three weeks, there's going to be tickets for a theater. I was like, what? Like it just it instantly was like, I gotta go, I, I yeah. gotta go. I mean, like I said, the last thing I saw was Nemesis in theaters. Yeah. So yeah. I remember I mean, that was amazing, and and our theater's packed, by the way. I mean, well, that, yeah. I think it, yeah, all they were all sold out, um, or filled. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was it was really cool. Well, yeah, yeah, can I can I can I can I talk a little bit about Row? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I don't know if like was that your decision or like like let's bring back Row. Let's you know see if we can get yeah. a hold of Michelle Forbes. Does she want to come back? Like get that kind of going on here with Picard like a tie-in right because it never felt like the end right of preemptive strike I mean that was a wrap that's the last we knew I thought oh, she, I, was she always, died. I was always surprised that Roe didn't turn up in a, one of the feature films um, I mean what a character to come back uh, and so it felt like if we were going to do the very last next gen story that was definitely uh, one would love to everybody in in the room was like let's let's tie that up let's tell that story um yeah it was uh it and the performances were amazing but it was also the the what i liked the most about it was it was a paranoia thriller in which these two characters weren't really sure if they were sitting across from the real mccoy that's so, no that's how it and, really you and, 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 and the only way for them to truly accept that they're talking to the other was was to work through a catharsis of their relationship which had this incredible thing to it so that felt like really good storytelling to do um and though you couldn't ask for two finer actors to pull that off but the two of them in that bar is really um it was really something special to watch you know, it was, it's one of my favorite episodes of the whole season i mean it, it's hard because i really try to watch it i'm sure as, as it's intended as like a movie 
right but that right yeah. that that's why i was like wow it was so cool to see that because i was thinking the same thing and i know that's obviously the intentions right i'm like is she a changeling yeah uh, is did we just bring her back to be like hey look it's ro surprise but yeah, well that wouldn't be satisfying but yeah no. but you should be wondering are they going to do that um and then it it them that having that breakthrough you broke my heart um i think was uh was the key to it all well i guess neither of them really yeah they never really had closure i mean she left no she not she, really she, wanting to disappoint him but she she was out yeah were there times where there's other characters that you wanted to bring in, uh, maybe from DS9 oh. or more from Voyager? Or yeah, I mean, really wanted to bring in Kira Quark um, was was yeah. another one, um, but we knew we wanted kind of a scary Ferengi, and I didn't want to retcon Quark in, in any which way like that. Um, um, Janeway was was one that we spoke about quite a bit. Um, Harry Kim, we had uh, was in was in a version of the script of um, as captain of the Sulu at one point, and then captain of Voyager B at some. It kept changing, um, and then uh, I mean, it, you know, it, if you can think of it, it we it probably like you probably up. thought of it, yeah, um, within reason, yeah, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, we really wanted, I really wanted to have Walter on screen uh, for Chekhov's son. Um, but we we just, you know, couldn't couldn't do it all. It was amazing we, we were able to do what we did. Yeah, you mentioned that, right? Because there was just not a lot of time, and if the budget can fit it, and can we get all this done? And Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there's some, there's, there's some scenes in the Enterprise D, I think, that are just like, two takes that's all we had time to do and thank god we had such extraordinary actors and professionals that could get through it um but we just didn't have the time um because you have a giant board cube i mean all this stuff with the queen and jack and picard was like that was only two three days max and that was really hard to shoot because it's not as easy set to get around there's wires and shit everywhere right um, and so and you're in this that's how we ended those were the last scenes were because we needed the most time to get that set ready um and even on on day one of well not day one but when we did the test uh camera test for it it didn't look right it didn't look like a board cube it looked like dagobah like the way we lit it and oh and, shoot like just kind of looked all murky swamp sort of and um I mean, it looked really cool, but it didn't look, it didn't feel right. And so, um, and I, I remember we, we did it on a Saturday and it was very stressful. And we get there and I was like, I'm like, I'm going to have to break everybody's heart here. I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a board cube. Like it, you can't. And so we had to, then you have to really, you don't have any time, right? You're right. Like, this shoots on Tuesday. So whatever you're doing, you're doing on Monday to fix this. Right, you need to get it done. And what now. is it? And then it's like, well, there's not enough practical lights. There doesn't really like it doesn't feel like this. It's not the right color. It's not the right this. And then again, we had such an incredible crew and uh, an incredible DP um, to be able to 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 adjust like that uh, uh, that fast is that's where. It's, that's where your money's at. That's where like it counts when you have that kind of talent, that caliber of, 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 I can kind of do that switch around real quick and be like, yeah. we need to get back on track now and get it done. And yeah. They go, bah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And again, not, not to anyone's fault. It's just that like sure, just that's how it happened. Like, like, why does this look like this? It's just, it's just not right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel that way. Like yeah, sometimes, John, like John Joffin is, is our extraordinary DP of those last two, and again, like he's stressed out because he wants it to look right and get it right too. But he's sure. like, so then you really have to be like, what is it we need to identify that's not right? We added screens and things in the background and different, and then it just came to, once that all that was there, it felt exactly right, and we were there very quickly. It's funny that you said that though, man. I mean, because uh, I I know what you mean. Like when I'll do like photography or something, I'll do a shot, and I'm like, no, there's something wrong. I mean, you know what I mean. But fortunately, I have the luxury, right? I could be like, well, okay, I could take some time and yeah, reangle or something. But I can't imagine like 
terrifying when getting you get sets set. done. It, when you get the set and it doesn't look when, when it's when you're on the day, that's the scariest time because you've got to fix it in five minutes, not five hours. Right, you don't have time to kind of yeah yeah dilly dally around and whatnot. Um, yeah, geez, you know, if I can, I was wondering too that you know we talk about like getting into track and working in track being a fan of track at a young age was there a specific episode i was talking to some of my friends about this you know i was just wondering like was there one particular episode you think that like really kind of won you over as a star trek fan or does it just is it just kind of a memory of growing up watching well i mean it? i i mean i grew up with the original series first and foremost before next gen air like mm-hmm. i watched i was in high school or next you know junior high i think when next gen started airing yeah junior high and um so i mean probably sitting on the edge of forever mm. uh, trouble with triple i mean all the classic um enemy within all those classic next gen i mean uh, original series right and then the movies i like the movies were coming out when i would go to after i didn't see two but star trek three was like one of my first movie going experiences and I saw it like three times in, in the theater. And just, uh, again, there's a reason why Space Dock and there's, you know, starships are so prevalent in <laughs> Picard season three because that was all burned into my DNA from when I was That's what I was old. wondering. And that screen being like, look at this, they're stealing the Enterprise from Space Dock. How cool is this? Um, and so in the Excelsior and other other starships was, was such a mind-blowing thing to a nine-year-old. Uh, and so the, all that stuff stayed with me all the way, you know, all the way through Star Trek six and then and beyond, you know, and then next gen, you know, I was there when next gen aired and next gen, I mean, next gen has infinitely more, um, I would say memorable and higher caliber episodes. I would just, agree. Just for seven, I mean, there's seven seasons worth, of course. Yeah. Are, right. Um, and they, because of the original series, they had the ability to go further and farther, right? So, um, I mean, and, and there's so many, and I, not even just best of both worlds, I mean, but inner light, I mean, inner, like that's, that's an episode of television I talk about probably in every writer's room. There's a, you know, um, as, a, as, a, as a way of elevated science fiction, but one that just pounds you in the heart by the end yeah and it's just a standalone story i yeah. mean you can kind of you know and it just hits you it hits you that yeah. way but even like payoffs like in in next gen for me for like Sarek and spock were really powerful for mm-hmm. when, um picard lets spock uh mind meld with him so he could feel Sarek Sarek's love for his son i mean come on it's just so good yeah you know, um, and that's why I think Star Trek has the the edge on all the other franchises in, in, in that way, because they've always been telling stories like that, that were that powerful, you know? Yeah. And, it, you know, it's hard. I have a lot of friends that are, you know, a lot of Star Trek fans, but I also have a lot of Star Wars fans. Yeah. I think I've, I've, it's fair to say, like, we're probably fans of both, but, of course, you know, there's yeah. some that are just die hard Star Wars. And I'm like, listen, you got, you gotta, you gotta watch some Star Trek, man. It's not uh it's almost like you were you were saying earlier where you were kind of like hiding the fact that you know you're like super fan of trek and some people will look at that and be like well okay that's like super geeky or something like you like star wars i mean it's still like you know it's still fun it's still science fiction you got to check out some trek man the stories are where it's at the characters i mean so going back to to the figures right with exo6 right you have picard you know shaw's coming next you know for for pre-order you saw wharf um Vatic yeah. is there Vatic. That's seven coming um with that said i mean just with even outside of picard are there any other or, or, or including picard but are there any other figures that you would like to see um come out i mean i think i mean jack crusher rafi uh i mean I, i'd love to see that i mean i'd love to see all of the next gen mm-hmm. characters in there in there in uh, season three uh uniforms with those jackets i think would be really cool i mean but i mean how selfish is 
to that. But I mean, I would love to have the whole crew. Well, no, of course, of course. But, I, I mean, I also would. want all. I mean, the original series is, I, I, you know, I want the whole Wrath of Khan ensemble too, which is when they're monster maroons. I want bones. I want everybody. I want like that. You, they have to. They have, have to. to do that. If they don't do that, I will. I will storm XO Six headquarters. Like, but uh, you know that. Pro I would say make that the priority. Mm -hmm. Rathacon. Rathacon's priority. I mean, I can't wait for. I mean, um, Sabic is looks stunning. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Uh, but they've got to do the whole crew. They've got to. They've got to. You heard it here first. Heard it here first, all of Wrath of Khan. I mean, and you know, that's funny because you, you mentioned that, right? Going into season three, just to kind of reiterate on that, it, you heavily influenced growing up watching the films that I was a little taken aback. I, I appreciated all of that, but there was a lot of nods. I mean, I could tell what you mean, like you know, with the space dock and, and the uniforms. If there, a lot of season three felt like a lot of influence from the, from the movies yeah. and I appreciated that. And but that yeah, was all directly I, through you. Like your experience, uh, like just kind of growing it, up. Being it, like, hey. it, it was also, I mean, yeah. I mean, look, you get the opportunity as a Star Trek fan. You want to see the stuff you want to see. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, you know, within, within reason. And so, um, and then, I mean, for the, as far as the next gen films go, I mean, like first contact was a, to me is the best of, of them. And the spirit of that too, I think kind of trickled through, um, I think the voices and the characters we tried to 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 feel like um, that was in the and certainly the theme the music from that was just spectacular and beautiful yeah. and to me it always felt like we should hear it again not just one a one off uh, so uh, that to me sort of became the theme of like that next gen family uh, that that beautiful goldsmith cue. Um, so yeah, all that all that stuff was 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 uh, was all influenced. I'll tell you when I when the first episode ended, and I heard that music coming in, that just it, it, yeah, I know what you mean. It, it it evoked a certain response out of yeah. me, you know. Yeah. And then comes in the TNG th after, you know, I was like, oh, right. okay, this is serious now. Like that's kind of how I felt. I don't know how to explain it. it just felt. It felt like it was very serious after the first episode, like just hearing the, that music come in and then mixed in with TNG. Cause yeah, I, I would agree. I think first contact like, movie was, that's like, that was their best right there. That was when they were like, yeah. Yeah. You know, so to bring that in, it was like, wow. I was, I was, yeah, I was blown away. I was really blown away. Cause I wasn't, I was not expecting again. I thought, you know, it was over at after nemesis. Right. And right. to see here we are 20, 25 i don't remember how many years it's been but over 20 years it was a long time <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so that was really cool i know everybody probably wants to know this or probably has asked you a million times but i guess i have to ask anyway just because i mean is there anything going on is this the last time we're gonna see uh, these guys or uh i don't you know i don't know um there's nothing i could t there's nothing currently in in development. I think they have. I mean, they have a uh, uh, Star Star Trek Academy uh, mm -hmm. on deck, which uh, sounds pretty amazing. I think that starts shooting this year uh, on top of um, Section Thirty One. Yeah, uh, and uh, that's a lot of Star Trek. Um, adds strange new worlds to it. You know, there's not a an infinite amount of money. <laughs> that, yeah, that's it, true. You know? That is true. Um, so, uh, but who knows what could happen in a year or a year and a half or, you know, or it might not ever. And we got to say goodbye with Picard season three. Um, I love that time period. I think, and I think these actors are extraordinary and I certainly want to Same. see more Jack and seven of nine and, Rafi and uh, and the LaForge sisters and and more Riker and more LaForge and Worf and yeah. uh, Worf and Alexander. So, you know, um, maybe one day or there'll be some version of something. But right now there's, uh, we're, there's nothing currently in the works. Well, I will say this. The way season three ended, I. If I were to never see them again, I would be happy. Right. And not in a bad way. Like I'm satisfied. Right. right. 
Um, right, right. But at the same time, you're, you're left with absolutely wanting more. And even if it's not, you know, all of the crew of TNG, like you mentioned, you know, the LaForges and Seven and Raph, like moving on, uh, you know, with Crusher, it, did that timeline, let's keep going with that. That would be. Yeah. I mean, Jack seeing what becomes of, of Jack and seven is, uh, is, would be pretty, pretty fun. Pretty fun. Well, I mean, we have lots of, I don't want I don't want to talk about a thing that's not happening. Right. But there's, there's right. a lot of stories you could do, you know? Um, but that's the beauty about Star Trek is there's a lot of stories you can do uh, across any idea. You know, in fact, at any time I run into a writer, like they should make a show about this, they should do this, and they're all viable mm -hmm. Star Trek options. So, um, you know, there's 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 value into using nobody you've ever seen before and just starting from, from scratch. Or there's to me infinite value in the this 25th century uh, timeline. So much to do. So, you know, just like Strange New Worlds is going, you know, going back and telling that, 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 those stories and how those, those people met or Scotty appears at the end of the last, I mean, it's, you know, there is an infinite amount of Star Trek stories you can tell, but not an infinite amount of money to make. That is it. true. That is true. There's not an infinite um, But, you know, it's up to the fans. Again, I always, I always look, it's always been up to the fans, right? They, they can make things happen. So I think they'll probably figure it out one way or the other fans got to make things happen guys uh <laughs> no it's true it is true i mean because there's so much that you can do and i i felt like you know like i said at the end i was like okay i'm i'm satisfied this was a great yeah. great ending but then you bring back john delancey and i see q and then i'm like now nah, you got me you right. got me like but, you know in a way though that it, that wasn't I should say it wasn't entirely designed to kick off the spinoff as much as you want the feeling that it keeps on going. Right. You know what I mean? Rather than just an end, like I like to know that Q showed up and said, you've got a life ahead of you. That's extraordinary. To me, that's a, that's a perfect ending is a, is a new beginning, you know? So that was, uh, it wasn't just designed to be like, we're let's make the spinoff now. It's just the right ending for those characters to, have, have passed the torch to the next generation right and you can think of like if nothing ever came became yeah. of it in the you future you can as a viewer for the rest of your life what they you know what was it like when the enterprise g ran into the klingon empire like what's going on i have big ideas for what the klingon empire is up to and what that would mean for wharf you know so there's cool things but like again there's not to say that like i mean i there's so many Star Trek stories to tell, you know, and uh, any one of these, I mean, I section 31 sounds incredible. Starfleet Academy sounds amazing. I mean, Starfleet Academy has been that thing you wanted to see since the old days. I mean, since they talked about making that a movie, an original series movie, yeah. Art Bennett, um, you know, so it's really cool. That's, that's what Star Trek's all about. Yeah, and it, you're right. It'll never, I mean, hopefully never end because there's always stories to tell. Yeah. There's always stories to tell, whether it's, you know, older crew, newer crew. But you're right. Three three shows coming. So yeah. never say never. Pretty but much. I want to talk about your collection now. Oh, okay. I cool. want, I want that Ectomobile, I want that 84 Ectomobile so bad because I have the Blitzway guys ghostbusters oh, you do? okay you have the blitzway ghostbusters i've got i've got all of them but i don't i've, I've been eyeing that ectomobile i've had it in my cart <laughs> on ebay i've and i've just never i never made the the leap to do it but that's gorgeous you're talking about the 80 the 84 right because i got the mine's the, the afterlife, afterlife. yeah I mean, the, by the way that's really cool too it is cool well the ecto one i, I missed that one right i missed that originally and then yeah. Man. It's you know five thousand dollars or something. I, I just jump, I just buy it now. If it's a thing I might want, I might just buy it. Well, I'd like to, but I don't have the money for the I know. Any, so I, know. I was like, you know what? The afterlife came out, it is cool, it has the gunner seat, opens up, and it, you know, it's got that weathered look to it. It's it, you know, it works. I mean, you could see it and you're like, Oh, that's Ghostbusters, right? Yeah. So you know they look great in front of it. Yeah. yeah, I was like, that's cool. You know, and of course I got all the back to the future, you know, stuff set up I've one, one two, and three. Stuff. And both cars I've got, yeah. Yeah, you're a huge. 
Back to the Future fan. Yes. Um, you know, but you mentioned Blitzway and all this. So you, you, for people who don't know, because mostly on my channel is a lot of six scale collecting. I mean, you, you, you collect yeah. figures. Yeah, I mean, look outside of X06, even you know. Oh, this guy, this guy sitting right now. Oh, look my, at that! My snow speeder loop. Yep, got that right there. I've got, I've got Iron Man. It's doing the snap. I've got. Oh yeah, the Mark eighty five. I mean, I've got the blitz. Maybe if you were to turn the camera this way, you would see anything from Q X06 to more Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters, uh, I've got Kirk and Spock from Motion Picture, I've got Alf, I've got Rick and Morty, um, I've got a whole bunch of 12 Monkeys stuff here, um, I've got an Enterprise G model, uh, oh. yeah, and um, along with an Enterprise A, and all, all sorts of stuff, Audrey 2. I, I saw that earlier, I was actually going to mention that, that was, when, I, when you first caught in, I was like, wait a minute, is that? That's Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> it's like, wow. I love me some Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know what to say. No, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Just put on my glasses and, and then see more it with, with, there we go. Now I'm full. <laughs> full Seymour. But um, yeah. That is so cool, man. I, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I knew you liked a lot of the same stuff, but I didn't know like how much you were, you know, that's like Todd with, with Todd Stash. I mean, he's got all sorts of yeah. hot toys and other stuff and, yeah, we are. We we practice what we preach. That's how it should be. It's just yeah. weird when you think about that. Sometimes, as an, as an outside, like a regular kind of collector of sorts, you never you never know who who's out there collecting things or who was like, you know, I'm actually a super fan of this. And you're like, what? I never. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to relate, you know, uh, from the outside. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my my good friends are like, you know, and they, we all say the same thing as like, I'm running out of space, but then you just oh, gotta, yeah. That's you the gotta truth. find a way to you just, you find a way life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell a lot of people on, uh, you know, on my shows, I'm like, dude, I'm out of space. Yeah. I mean, you could, you, I'm out of space. I mean, yeah. we just, I just got in the, uh, 2022 Batmobile, the jazz Inc. Batmobile. Yeah, that's cool. Batman. It's huge, yeah. but I was, I, like, have, I have the tumbler. Oh, okay. Get the Hot Toys Tumblr. Hot Toys Tumblr. It's huge. Yeah, it they're was, big. Yeah, one of those things I just like. I wanted and I wanted and I wanted and I saw it and I was like, all right, I just got, I got it. Just get it. Just get. I just let's just get. It. Just get it. I mean, what's well, you you have the Deloreans as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say the Ecto One is the biggest vehicle so far, and that thing's because these yeah. shelves back here are four feet and it barely fits. I know. That's that's and that's a major part of like why I haven't really got, I'm like, that is, I have to have the space for that thing. And, and, you know, but it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's, it's not a, I mean, as you can see behind me, there's just shelves and shelves. So yeah. it's not like, you know, you get one and you're like, all right, that's pretty cool. Where am I going to put it? And then you're like, right. Oh, well now I have room for it, but now I have room for like so much other stuff too. Right. And then it becomes yeah. this. Now, what do I do now? I have no space. Right. You know, um, but no, thank you. I mean, yeah, it's been a lot of, you know, years and years i mean i'm sure you you mentioned even you know before with you know the older figures like we all we've probably all been collecting since kids really yeah Just been fans I of this stuff. a lot of the things i had when i was a kid me too I had not thrown out what i had my parents throw out so many yeah. of them. i know i mean i just i think about all those old figures that i had the original like star wars stuff or masters of the universe you know he-man stuff or whatever i had gi joe's later yeah. on a ninja turtle all that all that it's all gone yep you just got to get them again when you're an adult really yeah but now they're so much better force your i know look, look <laughs> at this come on that's yeah uh, a, a angry night drunk picard <laughs> i love that <laughs> that was so good no I, yeah they, they look they, they're fantastic yeah they're fantastic from what we, we we'd had so you know, I, I can, you know, worry about the past and be like, well, I lost all this, but now, you know, looking, you know, coming in now we're, we're everything yeah. as a collector is just fantastic. I mean, even these, the model ships, the, the figures, I mean, anything you can think of so much better now. Well, I mean, thank you. XO six, this guy's thanking you too. This is incredible. I can't wait for the rest of the Picard season three team to, to come out. 
I mean, like, I really can't wait. I, I can't wait like, either. I can't even tell you how much. Like, like, like I mean, obviously, I'm excited that Todd is coming. probably going to throw a party at his house for when the Shaw figures come. I mean, because we've always, I mean, he's, again, he's an old friend of mine. So we've always been like, how cool would it be if one day they made an action? And he's like, oh, my God. And then I'm hoping that some fans make a make a a, a twelve monkeys mod for his character from Twelve Monkeys. Mm-hmm. Draw one and put on the leather jacket from from uh, Twelve Monkeys. So the first fan that does that, you got you win. Make you sure win. I- I'm sure someone will make someone will kick bash. Um, yeah, you know. And I remember talking with 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 Todd as well. Like when when we're ready, I think he will. You know, he would want to come back on and oh, yeah. uh, show the figure and then course i don't if you want to come on with todd you know we can can do that and just have fun and just kind of geek out over all of that hopefully soon you know i'm saying early 2024 so that'll be great yeah that'll that'll be fantastic i'm glad you 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 enjoy the figures of course opening picard for the first time i mean it's super awesome and they're extraordinary i love them I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoy it very much. And we got more coming, of course. So, you know, yeah. and uh always is a pleasure talking with you. And I'm glad you were able to come on uh today and talk about all of this. And it's just always awesome to, to be able for, to talk with you and you know share all this. Waiting waiting for Christmas vacation because that <laughs> was the only time I had. <laughs> no, that's that's totally understandable. Uh, you know, it was uh better late than never, as they say. I mean, yeah. right, it's been a busy it's been busy for all of us. So um yeah. Any final parting words that you'd like to oh, turn on just, everybody? Or? I'll be there with you. Yeah. Oh, you know, speaking of, um, will you be in Vegas next year? I think so. I or hope so. Early. Yeah. I think so too. I hope so too. So I'll probably see you again there. And that'd be great. Yeah, that'll be fun. So um, again, though, thank you for coming. Always oh, my pleasure, man. And we will thank talk again guys. soon. <laughs> you know, right. All right, guys. Take care. See ya.